Warning, the video you are about to watch may contain language and scenarios of a highly adult nature and is therefore not intended for children under the age of 18. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what is up guys? This is Couch Potato Mike back in the book club coming to you for part two of chapter six of Grey by E.L. James. I know we left off right as they were uh, about to uh, land at Escala. The big deal is right in front of them. So let's see what happens after you subscribe and after you give me that thumbs up and after you ring the bell icon. I'd ring the bell myself, but I can't reach it from here. But you can. It's just right down there. See, there's a little Couch Potato Mike logo right there. That's for subscribing, but there's a bell. So I, it's, it's down there somewhere, guys. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into part two of Freed. Chapter six by E.L. James. As the helipad comes into view, I take another deep breath. This is it. We land smoothly, and I power down, watching the rotor blades slow and come to a stop. All I can hear is the hiss of white no noise over our headphones as we sit in silence. I remove my cans, then remove Anna's too. We're here, I say quietly. Her face is pale in the glow of the landing lights. Her eyes luminous. Sweet Lord, she's beautiful. I unbuckle my harness and reach over to undo hers. She peers up at me, trusting, young, sweet. Her delicious scent is almost my undoing. Can I do this with her? She's an adult. She can make her own decisions. I want her to look at me the way she, this way once she knows me. Knows what I'm capable of. You don't have to do anything you don't want to. You know that, don't you? She needs to understand this. I want her submission. But more than that, I want her consent. I'd never do anything to you I'd... I'd never do anything I didn't want to do, Christian. She sounds sincere, and I want to believe her. With those pacifying words ringing in my head, I climb out of my seat and open the door, then jump down onto the helipad. I take her hand as she exits the aircraft. The wind whips her hair around her face, and she looks anxious. I don't know if it's because she's here with me and, and alone, or if it's because we're 30 stories high. I know it's a giddy feeling being up here. Come. Wrapping my arms around her to shield her from the wind, I guide her to the elevator. We are both quiet as we make the short journey to the penthouse. She's wearing a pale green shirt beneath her black jacket. It suits her. I make a mental note to indulge and to include blues and greens in the clothes I'll provide if she agrees to my terms. She should be better dressed. Her eyes meet mine in the elevator's mirrors as the doors open to my apartment. She follows me through the foyer, across the corridor, and into the living room. Can I take your jacket? I ask. Anna shakes her head and clutches the lapels to emphasize that she wants to keep her jacket on. Okay. What would you like to drink? I try a different approach and decide that I need to drink to steady my nerves. Why am I so nervous? Because I want her. I'm going to have a glass of white wine. Would you like to join me? Yes, please, she says. In the kitchen, I slip off my jacket and open the wine fridge. A Sauvignon Blanc would be a good icebreaker. Pulling out of a serviceable polier fume, I watch Anna peer through the balcony doors at the view. When she turns and walks back toward the kitchen, I ask if she'd be happy with the wine I've selected. I know nothing about wine, Christian. I'm sure it'll be fine. She sounds subdued. Shit. This isn't going well. Is she overwhelmed? Is that it? I pour two glasses and walk to where she stands in the middle of my living room, looking every bit the sacrificial lamb. Gone is the disarming woman. She looks lost. Like me. Here. I hand her the glass and she immediately takes a sip, closing her eyes in obvious appreciation of the wine. When she lowers the glass, her lips are moist. Good choice, Gray. You're very quiet, and you're, and you're not even blushing. In fact, 
I think this is the palest I've seen you, Anastasia. Are you hungry? She shakes her head and takes another sip. Maybe she's in need of some liquid courage, too. It's a very big place you have here, she says, her voice timid. Big? Big. It's big. There's no arguing with that. It's more than 10,000 square feet. Do you play? She looks at the piano. Yes. Well? Yes. Of course you do. Is there anything you can't do well? Yes, a few things. Cook. Tell jokes. Make free and easy conversation with the woman I'm attracted to. Be touched. Do you want to sit? I gesture toward the sofa. A brisk nod tells me that she does. Taking her hand, I lead her there. She sits down, giving me an impish look. What's so amusing? I ask and take a seat beside her. Why did you give me Tess of the D'Urbervilles specifically? Oh, where is this going? Well, you said you like Thomas Hardy. Is that the only reason? I don't want to tell her that she has my first edition and that it was a better choice than the Jude, of, Jude the Obscure. It seemed appropriate. I could hold you to some impossibly high ideal like Angel Clare or debase you completely like Alec D'Urberville. My answer is truthful enough and has a certain irony to it. What I'm about to propose I suspect will be very far from her expectations. If there are only two choices, I'll take the debasement, she whispers. Damn, isn't that what you want, Gray? Anastasia, stop biting your lip, please. It's very distracting. You don't know what you're saying. That's why I'm here, she says, her teeth leaving little indentations on the bottom lip, moist with wine. And there she is, disarming once more, surprising me at every turn. My cock concurs. We are cutting to the chase in this deal, but before we explore the details, I need her to sign the NDA. I excuse myself and head into my study. The contract and NDA are ready on the printer. Leaving the contract at my desk, I don't know if we'll ever get to it. I staple the NDA together and take it back to Anna. This is a non-disclosure agreement. I place it on the coffee table in front of her. She looks confused and surprised. My lawyer insists on it, I add. If you're going for option two, debasement, you'll need to sign this. And if I don't want to sign anything? Then it's Angel Claire High Ideas. Well, for the book anyway. Well, for most of the book anyway. And I won't be able to touch you. I'll send you home with Stefan and I will try my very best not to, to forget you. My anxiety mushrooms. This deal could all go to shit. What does this agreement mean? It means you cannot disclose anything about us, anything to anyone. She searches her face, and I don't know if she's confused or displeased. This could go either way. Okay, I'll sign, she says. Oh, well, that was easy. I hand her my, my Mont Blanc as she places the pen out the signature line. Aren't you even going to read it? I ask, suddenly annoyed. No. Anastasia, you should always read anything you sign. How could she be this foolish? Have her parents taught her nothing? Christian, what you fail to understand is that I wouldn't talk about us to anyone, anyway, even Kate. So it's immaterial whether I sign an agreement or not. If it means so much to you, or your lawyer, whom you obviously talk to, then fine, I'll sign. She has an answer for everything. It's refreshing. Fair point well made, Miss Steele, I note dryly. With a quick, disapproving glance, she signs, and before I can begin my pitch, she asks, Does this mean that we're going to make love tonight, Christian? What? Me? Make love? Oh, Gray, let's disabuse her of this straight away. No, Anastasia, it doesn't. First, I don't make love. I fuck. Hard. She gasps. That's made her think. Second, there's a lot more paperwork to do. And third, you don't know what you're in for. You could still run from here screaming. Come, I want to show you my playroom. She's nonplussed, the little V forming between her brows. You want me to play on your Xbox? I laugh out loud. Oh, baby. No, Anastasia. No Xbox, no PlayStation. Come. 
Standing, I offer her my hand, which she takes willingly. I lead her to the hallway and upstairs, where I stop outside the door to my playroom, my heart hammering in my chest. This is it. Pay or play. Have I ever been this nervous? Realizing my desires depend on the turn of this key, I unlock the door, and in that moment, I need to reassure her. You can leave any time. The helicopter is on standby to take you whenever you want to go. You could stay the night and go home in the morning. It's fine, whatever you decide. Just open the damn door, Christian, she says with a mulish expression at her arms crossed. This is a hair on my microphone. This is the crossroads. I don't want her to run, but I've never felt this exposed. Even in Elena's hands, and I know it's because she knows nothing about the lifestyle. I open the door and follow her into my playroom. My safe place. The only place where I'm truly myself. Anna stands in the middle of the room, studying all the paraphernalia that is so much a part of my life. The floggers, the canes, the bed, the bench. She's silent, drinking it in, and all I hear is the deafening pounding of my heart as the blood rushes past my eardrums. Now you know. This is me. She turns and gives me a piercing stare as I wait for her to say something. But she prolongs my agony and walks farther into the room, forcing me to follow her. Her fingers trail over a suede flogger, one of my favorites. I tell her what it's called, but she doesn't respond. She walks over to the bed, her hands exploring, her fingers running over one of the carved pillars. Say something, I ask. Her silence is unbearable, and I need to know if she's going to run. Do you do this to people, or do they do it to you? Finally. People? I want to snort. I do this to women who want me to. She's willing to have a dialogue. There's hope. She frowns. If you have willing volunteers, why am I here? Because I want to do this with you very much. Visions of her tied up in various positions around the room overwhelm my imagination. On the cross, on the bed, over the bench. Oh, she says, and wanders to the bench. My eyes are drawn to her inquisitive fingers stroking the leather. Her touch is curious, slow and sensual. Is she even aware? You're a sadist, she says, startling me. Fuck, she sees me. I'm a dominant, I say quickly, hoping to move the conversation on. What does that mean, she inquires, shocked, I think. It means I want you to willingly surrender yourself to me in all things. Why would I do that? To please me, I whisper. This is what I need from her. In very simple terms, I want you to want to please me. How do I do that? She breathes. I have rules, and I want you to comply with them. They are for your benefit and for my pleasure. If you follow these rules to my satisfaction, I shall reward you. If you don't, I shall punish you, and you will learn. And I can't wait to train you in every way. She stares at the canes behind the bench. And where does all this fit in? She waves at the surroundings. It's all part of the incentive package, both reward and punishment. So you'll get your kicks by exerting your will over me? Spot on, Miss Steele. It's about gaining your trust and your respect, so you'll let me exert my will over you. I need your permission, baby. I will gain a great deal of pleasure, joy even, in your submission. The more you submit, the greater my joy. It's a very simple e equation. Okay, and what do I get out of this? Me. I shrug. That's it, baby. Just me. All of me. And you'll find pleasure, too. Her eyes widen fractionally as she stares at me, saying nothing. It's exasperating. You're not giving anything away, Anastasia. Let's go back downstairs where I can concentrate better. It's very distracting having you in here. 
I hold up my hand for her, and for the first time she looks from my hand to my face, undecided. Shit. I frightened her. I'm not going to hurt you, Anastasia. Tentatively, she puts her hand in mine. I'm elated. She hasn't run. Relieved, I decide to show her the submissive's bedroom. If you do this, let me show you. I lead her down the corridor. This will be your room. You can decorate it how you like. Have whatever you like in here. My room? You're expecting me to move in? She squeaks in disbelief. Okay, maybe I should have left this until later. Not full time, I reassure. Just say Friday evening through Sunday. We have to talk about all that. Negotiate if you want to do this. I'll sleep here? Yes. Not with you? No. I told you I don't sleep with anyone except you when you were stupefied with drink. Where do you sleep? My room is downstairs. Come, you must be hungry. Weirdly, I seem to have lost my appetite, she declares with her familiar stubborn expression. You must eat, Anastasia. Her eating habits will be one of the first issues I'll work on if she agrees to be mine. That and her fidgeting. Stop getting ahead of yourself, Gray. I'm fully aware that this is a dark path I'm leading you down, Anastasia, which is why I really want you to think about this. She follows me downstairs into the living room once more. You must have some questions. You've signed your NDA. You can ask me anything you want and I'll answer. This is going to work. She's going to have to communicate. In the kitchen, I open the fridge and find a large plate of cheese and some grapes. Gail wasn't expecting me to have company and this is not enough. I wonder if I should order some takeout or perhaps take her out. Like a date. Another date. I don't want to raise her expectations like that. I don't do dates. Only with her. The thought is irritating. There's a fresh baguette in the bread basket. Bread and cheese will have to do. Besides, she says she's not hungry. Sit. I point to one of the bar stools, and Anna sits down and gives me a level gaze. You mentioned paperwork? She says, yes. What paperwork? Well, apart from the NDA, a contract saying what we will and won't do. I need to know your limits, and you need to know mine. This is consensual, Anastasia. And if I don't want to do this? Shit. That's fine, I lie. But we won't have any sort of relationship? No. Why? This is the only sort of relationship I'm interested in. Why? It's the way I am. How did you become this way? Why is anyone the way they are? It's kind of hard to answer. Why do some people like cheese and other people hate it? Do you like cheese? Mrs. Jones, my housekeeper, has left this for a late supper. I place the plate in front of her. What are your rules that I have to follow? I have them written down. We'll go through them once we've eaten. I'm really not hungry, she whispers. You will eat. The look she gives me is defiant. Would you like another glass of wine? I ask as a peace offering. Yes, please. I pour wine into her glass and sit down beside her. Help yourself to food, Anastasia. She takes a few grapes. That's it. That's all you're eating. Have you been like this for a while? She asks. Yes. Is it easy to find women who want to do this? Oh, if you only knew. You'd be amazed. My tone is wry. Then why me? I really don't understand. She's utterly, bem utterly bemused. Baby, you're beautiful. Why wouldn't I want to do this with you? Anastasia, I've told you. There's something about you. I can't leave you alone. I'm like a moth to a flame. I want you very badly. Especially now when you're biting your lip again. I think you have that cliche the w wrong way around, she says softly. And it's a disturbing confession. Eat, I order to change the subject. No, I haven't signed anything yet, so I think I'll hang on to my free will for a bit longer, if that's okay with you. Oh, her smart mouth. As you wish, Miss Steele. I hide my smirk. How many women, she asks, and she pops a grape into that mouth. Fifteen. I have to look away. For long periods of time? Some of them, yes. 
Have you ever hurt anyone? Yes. Badly? No. Dawn was fine, if a little shaken by the experience. And if I'm honest, so was I. Will you hurt me? What do you mean? Physically, will you hurt me? Only what you can take. I will punish you when you require it, and it will be painful. For example, when you get drunk and put yourself at risk. Have you ever been beaten? She asks. Yes. Many, many times. Elena was devil devilishly handy with a cane. It's the only touch I could tolerate. Her eyes widen as she puts the uneaten grapes on her plate and takes another sip of wine. Her lack of appetite is irritating and is affecting mine. Perhaps I should just bite the bullet and show her the rules. Let's discuss this in my study. I want to show you something. She follows me and sits in the leather chair in front of my desk as I lean against it, arms folded. This is what she wants to know. It's a blessing that she's curious. She hasn't run yet. For the contract laid out on my desk, I take one of the pages and hand it to her. These are the rules. They may be subject to change. They form part of the contract, which you can only... Ha which you can also have. Read these rules and let's discuss. Her eyes scan the page. Hard limits? She asks. Yes, what you won't do and what I won't do. We need to specify in our agreement. I'm not sure about accepting money for clothes. It feels wrong. I want to lavish money on you. Let me buy you some clothes. I may need you to accompany me to functions. Gray, what are you doing? This would be a first. And I want you dressed well. I'm sure your salary, when you get a job, won't cover the kind of clothes I want you to wear. I don't have to wear them when I'm not with you? No. Okay. I don't want to exercise four times a week. Anastasia, I need you supple, strong, and with stamina. Trust me, you need to exercise. But surely not four times a week. How about three? I want you to do four. I thought this was a negotiation. Again, she's disarming, calling me out of my shit. Okay, Miss Steele, another point well made. How about an hour on three days and one day a half an hour? Three days, three hours. I get the impression you're going to get, keep me exercised when I'm here. Oh, I hope so. Yes, I am. Okay, agreed. Are you sure you don't want... Are you sure you don't want to intern at my company? You're a good negotiator. No, I don't think that's a good idea. Of course, she's right. And it's my number one rule. Never fuck the staff. So, so, limits. These are mine. I hand her the list. This is it. Shit or bust time. I know my limits by heart and mentally tick off the list as I watch her read through. Her face grows paler and paler as she nears the end. Fuck, I hope this isn't frightening her off. I want her. I want her submission badly. She swallows, glancing nervously up at me. How can I persuade her to give me this try? I should reassure her, show her that I'm capable of caring. Is there anything you'd like to add? Deep down, I hope she won't add anything. I want carte blanche with her. She stares at me, still at a loss for words. It's irritating. I'm not used to waiting for answers. Is there anything you won't do? I prompt. I don't know. Not the response I was expecting. What do you mean you don't know? She shifts in her seat, looking uncomfortable, her teeth toying with her bottom lip again. I've never done anything like this. Hell, of course she hasn't. Patience, Gray, for fuck's sake. You've thrown a great deal of information at her. I continue my gentle approach. It's novel. Well, when you've had sex, was there anything that you didn't like doing? And I'm reminded of the photographer fumbling all over her yesterday. Fle she flushes and my interest is piqued. What has she done that she didn't like? Is she adventurous in bed? She seems so innocent. Normally I don't find that attractive. You can tell me, Anastasia. We have to be honest with each other or this isn't going to work. I really have to encourage her to loosen up. She won't even talk about sex. She's squirming again and staring at her fingers. Come on, Anna. Tell me, I order. Sweet and bored, she's frustrating. Well, I've not had sex before, so I don't know, she whispers. The earth stops spinning.
I don't fucking believe it. How? Why? Fuck! Never? I'm incredulous. She shakes her head, eyes wide. You're a virgin. I don't believe it. She nods, embarrassed. I close my eyes. I can't look at her. How the hell did I get this so wrong? Anger lances through me. What can I do with a virgin? I glare at her as fury surges through my body. Why the fuck didn't you tell me? I growl and start pacing my study. What do I want with a virgin? She shrugs apologetically at a loss for words. I don't understand why you didn't tell me. The exasperation is clear in my voice. The subject never came up, she says. I'm not in the habit of revealing my sexual status to everyone I meet. I mean, we hardly know each other. As ever, it's a fair point. I can't believe I've given her the bus tour of my playroom. Thank heavens for the NDA. Well, you know a lot more about me now, I snarl. I knew you were inexperienced, but a virgin? Hell, Anna, I just showed you. Not only the playroom, my rules, hard limits. She knows nothing. How could I do this? May God forgive me, I mutter under my breath. I'm at a loss. A startling thought occurs to me. Our one kiss in the elevator, where I could have fucked her there and then. Was that her first kiss? Have you ever even been kissed apart from me? Please say yes. Of course I have. She looks offended. Yeah, she's been kissed, but not often, and for some reason the thought is pleasing. And a nice young man hasn't swept you off your feet? I just don't understand. You're 21, nearly 22. You're beautiful. Why hasn't she taken... Why hasn't some guy taken her to bed? Shit. Maybe she's religious. No. Welch would have uncovered... Would have uncovered that. She gazes down at her fingers, and I think she's smiling. She thinks this is funny. I could kick myself. And you're seriously discussing what I want to do. When you have no experience, words fail me. How can this be? How have you avoided sex? Tell me, please. Because I don't get it. She's in college, and from what I remember of college, all the kids were fucking like rabbits. All of them. Except me. The thought is a dark one, but I push it aside at the moment. Anna shrugs, her small shoulders lifting slightly. No one's really, you know, she trails off. No one is what? See how attractive you are? No one's lived up to your expectations, and I do? Me? She really knows nothing. How could she ever be a submissive if she has no idea about sex? This is not going to fly, and all the groundwork I've done for this has been for nothing. I can't close the deal. Why are you so angry with me, she whispers. Of course she would think that. Make this right, Gray. I'm not angry with you. I'm angry at myself. I just assumed... Why the hell would I be angry with you? What a mess this is. I run my hands through my hair, trying to rein in my temper. Do you want to go? I ask, concerned. No, unless you want me to go, she says softly, her voice tinged with regret. Of course not. I like having you here. The statement surprises me as I say it. I do like having her here. Being with her, she, she's so different, and I want to fuck her, and spank her, and watch her alabaster skin pink beneath my hands. That's out of the question now, isn't it? Perhaps not the fucking. Perhaps I could. The thought is a revelation. I could take her to bed, break her in. It would be a novel experience for both of us. Would she want to? She asked me earlier if I was going to make love to her. I could try without tying her up. She might touch me. Fuck. I glance down at my watch and note the time. It's late. When I look back at her, the sight of her toying with her bottom lip arouses me. I still want her, in spite of her innocence. I could take her to bed. Would she want to? Knowing what she knows about me now? Hell, I have no idea. Do I just ask her? But she's, but she's turning me on, biting her lip again. I point it out and she apologizes. Don't apologize. 
It's just that I want to bite it too, hard. Her breath hitches. Oh, maybe she's interested. Yes, let's do this. My decision is made. Come, I offer, holding at my hand. What? We're going to rectify the situation right now. What do you mean? What situation? Your situation, Anna. I'm going to make love to you now. Oh. That's if you want to. I mean, I don't want to push my luck. I thought you didn't make love. I thought you fucked hard. She says, her voice husky and so damn seductive. Her eyes wide, pupils dilating. She's flushed with desire. She wants this too. And a wholly unexpected thrill unfurls inside me. I can make an exception. Or maybe combine the two. We'll see. I really want to make love to you. Please come to bed with me. I, w I want our arrangement to work, but you really need to have some idea of what you're getting yourself into. We could start your training tonight with the basics. This doesn't mean I'll, I've come over all hearts and flowers. It's a means to an end, but one that I want, and hopefully you do too. The words rush out in a torrent. Gray, get a hold of yourself. Her cheek's pink. Come on, Anna. Yes or no, I'm dying here. But I haven't done all the things you require from your list of rules. Her voice is timid. Is she afraid? I hope not. I don't want her to be afraid. Forget about the rules. Forget, forget about all those details for tonight. I want you. I've wanted you since you fell into my office and I want you to want me. I know you want me. You wouldn't be sitting here calmly discussing punishment and hard limits if you didn't. Please, Anna, spend the night with me. I offer her my hand again, and this time she takes it, and I pull her into my arms, holding her flush against my body. She gasps with surprise, and I feel her against me. The darkness is quiet, perhaps subdued by my libido. I want her. She's so alluring. This girl confounds me every step of the way. I've revealed my dark secret, and she's still here. She hasn't run. My fingers tug at her hair, pulling her face up to mine, and I gaze into captivated eyes. You are one brave young woman, I breathe. I am in awe of you. I lean down and gently kiss her, then tease her lower lip with my teeth. I want to bite this lip. I tug harder, and she whimpers. My cock hardens in response. Please, Anna, let me make love to you. I whisper against her mouth. Yes, she responds, and my body lights up like the 4th of July. Get a grip, Gray. We have no arrangements in place, no limits set. She's not mine to do with as I please, and yet I'm excited, aroused. It's an unfamiliar but exhilarating feeling. Desire for this woman coursing through me. I'm in a tipping edge of a giant roller coaster. Vanilla sex? Can I do this? Without another word, I lead her out of my study, through the living room, and down the corridor to my bedroom. She follows, her hand tightly holding mine. Shit. Contraception. I'm sure she's not on the pill. Fortunately, I have condoms for backup. At least I don't have to worry about every dick she slept with. I release her by the bed, walk over to my chest of drawers, and remove my watch, shoes, and socks. I assume you're not on the pill. She shakes her head. I didn't think so. From the drawer, I take out a packet of condoms, letting her know I'm prepared. She studies me, her eyes impossibly large in her beautiful face, and I have a moment's hesitation. This is supposed to be a big deal for her, isn't it? I remember my first time with Elena, how embarrassing it was, but what a heaven-sent relief. Deep down, I know I should send her home, but the simple truth is, I don't want her to go. I want her. What's more, I could see my desire reflecting in her expression and her darkening eyes. Do you want the blinds drawn? I ask. I don't mind, she says. I thought you didn't let anyone sleep in your bed. Who says we're going to sleep? Oh. Her lips form a perfect small O. Oh. My cock hardens further. Yes, I'd like to fuck that mouth, that O. Oh. <coughs> I stalk toward her like she's my prey. Oh, baby, I want to bury myself in you. Her breathing is shallow and quick. Her cheeks are rosy. She's wary but excited. She's at my mercy. 
and knowing that makes me feel powerful. She has no idea what I'm going to do to her. Let's get this jacket off, shall we? Reaching up, I gently push her jacket off her shoulders, fold it, and place it on my chair. Do you have him? Do you have any idea how much I want you, Anna Steele? Her lips part as she inhales. I reach up to touch her cheek. Her skin is petal soft beneath my fingertips as they glide down her chin. She's entranced, lost, under my spell. She's already mine. It's intoxicating. Do you have any idea what I'm going to do to you? I murmur and hold her chin between my thumb and forefinger. Leaning down, I kiss her firmly, molding her lips to mine, returning my kiss. She's soft and sweet and willing, and I have an overwhelming need to see her, all of her. I make quick work of her buttons, slowly peeling off her blouse and letting it fall to the floor. I stand back to look at her. She's wearing a pale blue bra that Taylor bought. She's stunning. Oh, Hannah, you have the most beautiful skin, pale and flawless. I want to kiss every single inch of it. There's not a mark on her. The thought is unsettling. I want to see her marked, pink, with tiny thin welts from maybe a crop. She colors a delicious rose, embarrassed no doubt. If I do nothing else, I will teach her not to be shy with her body. Reaching up, I pull her hair tie, freeing her hair. It tumbles lush and chestnut around her face, down to her breasts. Hmm, I like brunettes. She's lovely, exceptional, a jewel. Holding her head, I run my fingers through her hair and pull her to me, kissing her. She moans against me and parts her lips, allowing me to access to her warm, wet mouth. Her sweet, appreciative noises echoes through me to the end of my cock. Her tongue shyly meets mine, tentatively probing my mouth. For some reason, her fumbling inexperience is hot. She tastes luscious, wine, grapes, and innocence, a potent, heady mix of flavors. I fold my arms tightly around her, relieved that she grips only my upper arms. With one hand in her hair, holding her in place, I run my other hand down her spine to her ass and push her against me, against my erection. She moans again. I continue to kiss her, coaxing her unschooled tongue to explore my mouth as I explore hers. My body tenses when she moves her hands up my arms, and for a moment I worry where she's, she'll touch me next. She caresses my cheek and strokes my hair. It's a little unnerving, but when she twists her fingers in my hair, pulling gently, damn, that feels good. I groan a response but can't let her continue. Before she could touch me again, I push her against the bed and drop to my knees. I want her out of these jeans. I want to strip her, arouse her more, and keep her hands off me. Grasping her hips, I run my tongue just north of the waistband to her navel. She tenses and inhales sharply. Fuck does she smell and taste good. An orchard in springtime, and I want my fill. Her hands fist in my hair once more. This I don't mind. In fact, I like it. I nip her hip bone, and her t grip tightens in my hair. Her eyes are closed, her mouth slack, and she's panting. As I reach up and undo the button on her jeans, she opens her eyes, and we study each other. Slowly, I ease down the zipper and move my hands around her ass, slipping my hands inside the waistband. My palms against the soft cheeks of her behind, I slide her jeans off. I can't stop myself. I want to shock her, test her boundaries right now. Not taking my eyes off hers, I deliberately lick my lips, then lean forward and run my nose up the center of her panties, inhaling her arousal. Closing my eyes, I savor her. Lord, she's enticing. You smell so good. My voice is husky and I want my jeans. My voice is husky with want and I want my and my jeans are becoming extremely uncomfortable. I need to take them off. Gently I push her onto the bed and grasping her right foot I make quick work of removing her sneaker and sock. To tease her I run my thumbnail along her instep and she writhes gratifyingly on the bed, her mouth open, watching me, fascinated. Leaning down I trace my tongue along her instep. 
and my teeth graze the little line that my thumbnail has left in its wake. She lies back on the bed, eyes closed, groaning. She's so responsive, it's delightful. Oh, Anna, what I could do to you, I whisper, as images of her writhing beneath me in the playroom flash through my mind, shackled on my four-poster bed, bent over the table, suspended from the cross. I could tease and torture her until she begged for release. The images make my jeans even tighter. Hell. Quickly, I remove her other shoe and sock and pull her off her jeans. She's almost naked on my bed, her hair framing her face perfectly, her long, pale legs stretched out in an invitation before me. I have to make allowances for her inexperience, but she's panting, wanting, her eyes fixed on me. I've never fucked anyone in my bed before. Another first with Miss Steele. You're very beautiful, Anastasia Steele. I can't wait to be inside you. My voice is gentle. I want to tease her some more, find out what she does know. Show me how, to pl how you pleasure yourself, I ask, gazing intently down at her. She frowns. Don't be coy, Anna. Show me. Part of me wants to spank the shyness out of her. She shakes her head. I don't know what you mean. Is she playing games? How do you make yourself calm? I want to see. She remains mute. Clearly I've shocked her. I don't, she mutters finally, her voice breathless. I gaze at her in disbelief. Even I used to masturbate before Elena sunk her claws into me. She's probably never had an orgasm, though I find this hard to believe. Whoa. I'm responsible for her first fuck and her first orgasm? I'd better make this good. Well, we'll see what we can do about that. I'm going to make you come like a freight train, baby. Hell, she's probably never even seen a naked man either. Now taking my eyes off her, I undo the top button of my jeans and ease them to the floor though I can't risk taking my shirt off because she might touch me. But if she did, it wouldn't be so bad, would it? Being touched? I banish the thought before the darkness surfaces, the, and grasping her ankles, I spread her legs. Her eyes widen and her hands clench my sheets. Yes, keep your hands there, baby. I crawl slowly up the bed between her legs. She squirms beneath me. Keep still, I tell her, and lean down to kiss the delicate skin of her inner thigh. I trail kisses up her thighs, over her panties, across her belly, nipping and sucking as I go. She writhes beneath me. I'm going to have to work on keeping you still, baby, if you'll let me. I'll teach her to just absorb the pleasure and not move, intensifying every touch, every kiss, every nip. The thought alone is enough to make me want to bury myself in her, but before I do, I want to know how responsive she is. So far, she hasn't held back. She's allowing me free reign over her body. She's not hesitant at all. She wants this. She really wants this. I dip my tongue into her navel and continue my leisurely journey north, savoring her. I shift, lying beside her, one leg still between hers, my hand ghosts up her body, over her hip, up her waist, onto her belly. Gently, I cup her breast, trying to gauge her reaction. She doesn't stiffen. She doesn't stop me. She trusts me. Can I extend her trust to letting me have complete dominion over her body? Over her? The thought is exhilarating. You fit my hand perfectly, Anastasia. Dipping my finger into her bra cup, I jerk it down, freeing her breast. The nipple is small, rose pink, and it's already hard. I drag the cup down so that the fabric and underwire rest under her breast, forcing it upward. I repeat the process with the other cup and watch, fascinated as her nipples grow under my steady gaze. Whoa, I haven't even touched her yet. Very nice. I whisper in awed appreciation and blow gently on the nearest nipple, watching in delight as it hardens and extends. Anastasia closes her eyes and urges her back. Keep still, baby. Just absorb the pleasure. It will feel so much more intense.
Blowing on one nipple, I roll the other gently between my thumb and forefinger. <clears throat> she grasps the sheets tightly as I lean down and suck hard. Her body bows and bows against... Her body bows again and she cries out. Let's see if we can make you come like this, I whisper, and don't stop. She starts to whimper. Oh yes, baby, feel this. Her nipples extend farther and she starts grinding her hips around and around. Keep still, baby. I want to teach you to keep still. Oh, please, she begs. Her legs stiffen. It's working. She's close. I continue my lascivious assault, concentrating on each nipple, watching her response, sensing her pleasure. It's driving me to distraction. Lord, I want her. Let go, baby. I murmur and pull her nipple with my teeth. She cries out as she climaxes. Yes. I move quickly to kiss her, capturing her cries in my mouth. She's breathless and panting, lost in her pleasure. Mine. I own her first orgasm, and I'm ridiculously pleased by the thought. You're very responsive. You're going to have to learn to control that, and it's going to be so much fun teaching you how. I can't wait, but right now I want her. All of her. I kiss her once more and let my hand travel down her body, down to her vulva. I hold her, feeling her heat, slipping my index finger through the lace of her panties. I slowly circle around her. Fuck, she's soaking. You're so deliciously wet. God, I want you. I thrust my finger inside her and she cries out. She's hot and tight and wet and I want her. I thrust into her, taking her cries into my mouth. I press my palm to her clitoris, pushing down, pushing around. She cries out and writhes beneath me. Fuck, I want her. Now. She's ready. Sitting up, I drag her panties off, then my boxers, and reach for the condom. I kneel up between her legs, pushing them farther apart. Anastasia watches me with, what, trepidation? She's probably never even seen an erect penis before. Don't worry. You'll expand too, I mutter. Stretching out over her, I put my hand on either side of her head, taking my way to my elbows. God, I want her. But I check she's still keen. You really want to do this? I ask. For fuck's sake, please don't say no. Please, she begs. Pull your knees up. I instruct her. This will be easier. Have I ever been so aroused? I can barely contain myself. I don't get it. It must be her. Why? Gray, focus. I position myself so I can take her at my whim. Her eyes are open wide, imploring me. She really wants this as much as I do. Should I be gentle and prolong the ag agony, or do I go for it? I go for it. I need to possess her. I'm going to fuck you now, Miss Steele. Hard. One thrust and I'm inside her. Fuck! She's so fucking tight. She cries out. Shit, I've heard her. I want to move to lose myself in her, and it takes all my restraint to stop. You're so tight. Are you okay? I ask. My voice is hoarse. Anxious whisper as she nods, eyes wider. She's like heaven on earth, so tight around me. And even though her hands are on my forearms, I don't care. The darkness is slumbering, perhaps because I've wanted her for so long. I've never felt this desire, this hunger before. It's a new feeling, new and shiny. I want her. I want so much from her. Her trust, her obedience, her submission. I want her to be mine, but right now, I'm hers. I'm going to move, baby. My voice is strained as I ease back slowly. It's such an extraordinary, exquisite feeling. Her body cradling my cock. I push into her again and claim her, knowing no one is ever before. She whimpers. I stop. More? Yes, she breathes after a moment. This time I thrust into her more deeply. Again? I plead as sweat beads on my body. Yes. Her trust in me. It's suddenly overwhelming. And I start to move, really move. I want her to come. 
I will not stop until she comes. I want to own this woman, body and soul. I want her clenching around me. Fuck, she starts meaning every thrust, matching my rhythm. See how well we fit together, Anna? I grasp her head, holding her in place while I claim her body and kiss her hard, claiming her mouth. She stiffens beneath me. Fuck yes, her orgasm is close. Come for me, Anna. I demand as she cries out as, she cons as she's consumed, tipping her head back, her mouth open, her eyes closed, and just the sight of her ecstasy is enough. I explode in her, losing all sense and reason as I call out her name and come violently inside her. When I open my eyes, I'm panting, trying to catch my breath. And we're forehead to forehead, and she's staring up at me. Fuck, I'm undone. I plant a swift kiss on her forehead and pull out of her and lie down beside her. She winces as I withdraw, but other than that, she looks okay. Did I hurt you? I ask and tuck her hair behind her ear because I don't want to stop touching her. Anna beams with incredulity. You're asking me if you hurt me? And for a moment, I don't know why she's grinning. Oh, my playroom. The irony is not lost on me, I mutter. Even now, she confounds me. Seriously, are you okay? She stretches out beside me, testing her body and teasing me with an amused but sated expression. You haven't answered me, I growl. I need to know if she's found that enjoyable. All the evidence point to, points to yes, but I need to hear it from her. While I'm waiting for her reply, I remove the condom. Lord, I hate these things. I discard it discreetly on the floor. She peers up at me. I'd like to do that again, she says with a shy giggle. What? Again? Already? Would you know, Miss Steele? I kiss the corner of her mouth. Demanding little thing, aren't you? Turn on your front. That way, I know you won't touch me. She gives me a brief, sweet smile, then rolls onto her stomach. My cock stirs with approval. I unhook, her, I unhook her bra and run my hand down her back to her pert behind. You really have the most beautiful skin. I say as I brush her hair off her face and push her legs apart. Gently, I plant soft kisses on her shoulder. Why are you wearing your shirt? She asks. She's so damn inquisitive. While she's on her front, I know she can't touch me, so I lean back and pull my shirt over my head and let it drop to the floor. Fully naked, I lie on top of her. Her skin is warm and she melts against mine. Hmm, I could get used to this. So, you want me to fuck you again? I whisper in her ear, kissing her. She squirms deliciously against me. Oh, this will never do. Keep still, baby. I skim my hand down her body to the back of her knee, then hitch it up high, parting her legs wide so she spread beneath me. Her breath catches, and I hope it's with anticipation. She stills beneath me. Finally. I palm her ass as I ease my weight into her. I'm going to take you from behind, Anastasia. With my other hand, I grab her hair and the nape at the nape and gently tug, holding her in place. She cannot move. Her hands are helpless and splayed against the sheets out of arm's way. You are mine, I whisper. Only mine. Don't forget it. With my free hand, I move from her ass to her clitoris and begin circling slowly. Her muscles flex beneath me. She tries to move, but my weight keeps her in place. I run my teeth along her jawline. Her sweet fragrance lingers over the, si over the scent of our coupling. You smell divine, I whisper as I nuzzle behind her ear. She starts to circle her hips against my moving hand. Keep still, I warn, or I might stop. Slowly, I insert my thumb inside her and circle it around and around, taking particular care to stroke the front wall of her vagina. She groans and tenses beneath me, trying to move again. You like this? I tease, and my teeth trace her outer ear. I don't stop my fingers from tormenting her clitoris, but I begin to ease my thumb in and out of her. She stiffens but can't move. She groans loudly, her eyes scrunched up tight. You're so wet, so quickly, so responsive. Oh, Anastasia, I like that. I like that a lot. 
Right. Let's see how far you'll go. I withdraw my thumb from her vagina. Open your mouth. I order, and when she does, I thrust my thumb between her lips. See how you taste? Suck me, baby. She sucks my thumb hard. Fuck. And for a moment, I imagine it's my cock in her mouth. I want to fuck your mouth, Anastasia, and I will soon. I'm breathless. She closes her teeth around me, biting me hard. Ow, fuck. I grip her hair tightly and she loosens her mouth. Naughty, sweet girl. My mind flits flits through a number of punishments worthy of such a bold move that, if she were my submissive, I could inflict on her. My cock expands to bursting at the thought. I release her and sit back on my knees. Stay still. Don't move. I grab another condom from my bedside table, rip open the foil, and roll the latex over my erection. Watching her, I see that she's still, except for the rising and falling of her back as she pants in anticipation. She's gorgeous. Leaning over her again, I grasp her hair and hold her so she can't move her head. We're going to go real slow this time, Anastasia. She gasps, and I gently ease into her until I can go no farther. Fuck, she feels good. As I ease out, I circle my hips and slowly slip into her again. She whimpers and her limbs tense beneath me. She tries to move. Oh no, baby. I want you still. I want you to feel this. Take all the pleasure. You feel so good, I tell her, and repeat the move again, circling my hips so I can, as I go slowly. In, out, in, out. Her insides start to tremble. Oh no, baby. Not yet. No way I'm letting you come. Not when I'm enjoying this so much. Oh, please, she cries. I want you sore, baby. I pull out and sink into her again. Every time you move tomorrow, I want you to be reminded that I've been here. Only me. You are mine. Please, Christian, she begs. What do you want, Anastasia? Tell me. I continue the slow torture. Tell me. You, please. She's desperate. She wants me. Good girl. I increase the pace and her insides begin to quiver, responding immediately. Between each thrust I utter one word. You are so sweet. I want you so much. You are mine. Her limbs tremble with the strain of keeping still. She's on the edge. Come for me, baby, I growl. And on command, she shudders against me as her orgasm rips through her and she screams my name into the mattress. My name on her lips is my undoing and I climax and collapse on top of her. Fuck, Hannah, I whisper, drained yet elated. I pull out of her almost immediately. And roll onto my back. She curls up at my side. And as I pull off the condom, she closes her eyes and falls asleep. (sighs) So far, I'd say the deal is going well. She's just lost her virginity to him twice in one night. Yeah, I know what I said. Don't judge me. I had forgotten, because it's been so long since I've read this book, the big difference in his personality uh, from Fifty Shades of Grey to Fifty Shades Freed and now from Grey to Freed, uh, it's just so different. I mean, because he is still the damaged goods that he was, that Elena made him. And he's still in that mindset of he has to have things a certain way and no other way will work. But he's slowly discovering that part of himself, that normal part of himself, that part that everybody has, he's discovering how to be a normal person. And he's dis- and it's all because of a beautiful woman that fell into his office that he just can't take his mind off of and apparently never does. So until next time, which will be chapter 7, 
This is Couch Potato Mike reminding you guys that in the end we're all stories. So let's make them good ones. See you guys next time. Thank you.